So You Can Play That Game is proudly sponsored by NiceGameShop.com, the place to go for rare and unusual Asian games. Hi, I'm Michael. Take a seat and I'll teach you how to race to summon your god, beating out other cults and also, of course, avoiding those pesky investigators in Fate of the Elder Gods by Fabled Nexus. Start setting up the game, shuffle up all the god cards, and deal two to each player. They'll then pick one of these two to use for this game. And the circle with dots in tells you the recommended player count for this god, from one to three or more. Once each player has picked their elder god, you'll give them the lodge card for that elder god, and collect up all the chosen elder god cards. You'll then shuffle these up, and reveal one to be your first player. Next, each player will pick a colour and take the summon track token and the reference cards for that colour, as well as all the cultists. Seven of these they will place in their lodgers, so the rest you will place out on the board. You'll have seven in the abyss in the centre and one in each of the six territories. Also, place the dice Elder Sign Tokens and Investigators in piles near the board. You'll also place the Gate Cards near the Ceremony and shuffle up the Curse Cards and place them near the board. Next, you'll shuffle up the Spell Cards and place one on each of the locations as so, then deal three to each player. The remaining ones you'll sit near the Library. Then shuffle the artefacts and reveal two of them and place the stack near the museum. Finally, place the altar on other worlds and you're ready to begin. Unless you're playing a two or one player game. If you're playing a two player game, you'll also place the second altar on other worlds. And if you're playing a one player game, the second altar instead gets placed on the streets of Arkham. The aim of the game is to get your summoning track to nine before any other players. And if you do this, the game will immediately end and you've won. However, the game can also end if any player's elder signs reach the start spot of their summoning track. At this point, their god has been sealed and they've lost the game. And whoever has the highest summoning track will win the game. The game is made up of turns starting with the first player. They'll take their turn consisting of the following steps and then play passes in clockwise order to the next player until the game finishes. Those steps are prepare, move, activate and conclude. During the prepare step you'll unexhaust any used artefacts. So that's ones that have this symbol here and will have been turned 45 degrees when used. You then simply turn them back to be straight, ready to use again. To move, you'll use the spell cards from your hand, or you can choose to use a gate card if you have one. The cards you use will dictate where you move to, and you must move. You cannot stay in the same location where you already are. So here I have this red one, but I can't use it because I'm already there. So that limits my options to blue, because I've got two blue. However, I could go here to the museum if I wanted, but because I have two, I can use them the same way I would use a gate card, which is to go anywhere I want. So I would place the cards that I use to move in the line of spell cards for the location where I start, and then I move to the location I want. So in this case, I'm going to go to the ceremony. Then if the location contained three or more investigators, as this one does here, I would remove these investigators and place them in my lodge. If there were fewer than three, then nothing happens. You then take a cultist from your lodge and add it to that location, and an investigator from the supply and add that. If you don't have any cultists in your lodge to add, you'll instead take two from the abyss, add one to your lodge, and add one to the location. You also, however, add an elder sign to your board. 
in the highest number space that doesn't have an elder sign. Then determine if you have control of the location. You'll have control of the location if you have three or more cultists there and you have more cultists than any other player. If you don't have control, you can potentially gain temporary control by rolling a dice. You'll roll the dice and if it comes out with a Cthulhu symbol, then you gain temporary control. This means that you get to do the action as if you had control of that location. And that's the next step, activate. So let's talk about each of the locations and what it is they do. At Other Worlds, for each cultist that you have here, you'll roll a dice. If it comes up as a tentacle or as Cthulhu, then you can sacrifice it to the Abyss in order to advance your summoning track by one. If you have control, every Cthulhu that you roll also means you may take a cultist from the Abyss and add it to your lodge. If you go to the museum, then you can take an artefact, either one of the two face-up ones or blind off the top of the deck here. However, you can only have three artefacts during the game, so if you already have three, you'll have to discard one. These artefacts will then sit in front of you. Once you've taken artefacts, any remaining artefacts are then discarded and new ones revealed. If you have control of this location, you can choose, before you decide to take artefacts, to destroy the ones that are there and reveal two new ones. You can still then choose not to take one of those two and to take one blind off the top of the deck. Even if you take a blind off the top of the deck, once they've been taken, the two that were visible will be removed and new ones come out. The other thing that you gain if you have control of the museum here is you can sacrifice up to three of your cultists from the museum in order to remove an elder sign from any lodge of your choice. And you get to remove one elder sign per cultist sacrificed in this way. Visiting the ceremony will gain you a gate card. This does not count towards your hand limit on spell cards. This is separate. It will also allow you to activate your cult special power. And if you have control, then you can sacrifice two cultists from the ceremony to the abyss in order to increase your summoning track by one. At the streets of Arkham, you can take two cultists from your lodge and add them to any other player's lodge. Once you've done this, every player except for you is then raided. What a raid means is that for each investigator you have there, you roll a dice. If you get any elder signs, then the investigators are removed and you gain an elder sign in your lodge. If you get an elder star, the investigator remains as well as you gaining an elder sign. Any tentacles or Cthulhu's you don't gain an elder sign for and you get to remove an investigator. With the Streets of Arkham it's also worth noting that if you have no investigators in your lodge, like this player here for example, so let's say rather than it being my go it was this other player's go, they'll take two from the supply to place in my lodge and they could take one from their lodge if they had one and one from the supply. Also if you have control of the Streets of Arkham once you've completed this raid you can sacrifice one of your cultists from the Streets of Arkham to place an investigator from the supply to every other lodge. Next is the gathering and going here allows you to take three of your cultists out of the abyss and add them to your lodge. Also, you may move one of your cultists from the gathering location to any of the other five locations. Or, if you have control of the gathering, you can move any number of your cultists that are at the gathering to other locations. Going to the library has two effects. Firstly, you'll draw 
free spell cards and add these to your hand. And it's important to note that there is no hand limit in this game. It's simply a case of you have a minimum of free cards in your hand at the end of your turn. So you won't have to discard down if you have too many cards in hand. The other effect is rather than just being able to ready one spell during the conclude phase, you'll actually be able to ready two. But of course, you'll still need to have the spell power here in order to do that. That is, unless you have control. Because if you have control, you can sacrifice one of your cultists from the library in order to ignore the cost of one of the spells that you want to ready. And the cost is at the top of the spell here. So we've got a white, green and red. Speaking of readying spells in the conclude phase, that is now what we're going to talk about. So normally you can only ready one spell unless you've gone to the library. How you ready a spell is you use the symbols of the location where you are. So each location always has one plus any cards that have been put there in order to move. So in this case I would be able to ready a spell from my hand that required a red, a white, a blue or a blue. So that would not allow me to do this one because there's no green or this one because there's no yellow. This one I wouldn't be able to do because it requires two white and there's only one white but this one I would be able to do because it requires two blue and a white. It's important to note that if you have any spells readied already and they'll be face down in front of your player board, those symbols will also count towards your ability to be able to ready a spell. Once you've readied your spells, you remove all the spell cards from that location and discard them. Now, if you didn't ready a spell, they will stay there. The spell you ready will occupy one of these three slots and you can't have more than three spells readied. So you'll need to use a spell before you're then able to ready another one. However, you can use a spell at any time as long as it makes sense with the context of the spell's effect described on it. This is the same with artifact powers. They can be used at any time, even on other players' turns. Then, no matter how many spell cards you have in hand, you'll draw one more spell card to add to that hand. However, if you have less than three after drawing one, so say I only had this one, I drew one, and now I have less than three, I keep drawing until I have three cards in hand. The final step in a turn is to check how many investigators are in your lodge. If you have five or more, then you'll be raided as we described during the Streets of Arkham location. If you didn't have as many as five or more, then nothing happens and play proceeds to the next player. And you'll keep playing like this until the game ends. A few rules that I've not yet covered, which you'll need to be aware of. Gate cards, you're only ever allowed one at a time. So if you have one and you go to the ceremony, you don't take another one. You simply keep the one. Also, the first time that your summoning track token reaches an Elder Sign, you'll become cursed. Curses are these cards here. And you don't get to read this. What happens is it gets given to the player to your right they'll then read the card and the top bit in italics here will tell them when this triggers and it will do something very nasty for you typically. They will then keep an eye on every turn you take to see whether or not this triggers and they'll keep hold of it and at some point they're going to interrupt your turn to say hang on your curse triggers and you can have more than one curse at a time and there are other ways to gain curses as well as this. If for some reason your summoning track went down or you lost an Elder Sign, if you then went back to being Elder Sign and summoning track meeting, you don't take another curse. You only cursed once in this way during the game. 
Also, rule changes for two players is that each player will have their own altar. So, say, one player would take green, one player takes the grey. Then, on their turn, they can't go where the other player's altar is or stay in the location where they are, making it more restricted on their movement. In a solo game, you'll also use this second altar, but there'll then be an investigator turn which will involve their altar moving based on the spell card that is on the top of the deck. This will get added to the location as normal and then they move to that location. Although you can't move to the investigator's altar, the investigator can move to you and this has negative effects. You will draw a curse card and place this in front of you. Curses work differently in the solo mode. Rather than you having another player or worrying about them triggering, they're instead another end condition and you'll lose the game if you collect five curse cards in front of you. Also, they then move to other worlds and wherever they move to, they place one of their investigators. If your altar is at other worlds, they instead move to the streets of Arkham. And whenever the investigator's altar piece moves to the streets of Arkham, it's going to trigger a raid. And there is another change at the streets of Arkham because you don't have another player's lodge to place investigators in. Instead, you'll simply remove two investigators from your lodge and return them to the supply. And if you have control, you can sacrifice a cultist to remove an additional investigator from your lodge. Also, in order to have control of the location, rather than needing three cultists and more cultists than any other player, you have to have more cultists than there are investigators at the location. When you do have control of a location, instead of performing the location's control action, you can instead gain three Elder Signs to destroy a face-down curse. However, you can only do this once per turn. Also, as I said, there's an additional losing condition, as well as gaining ten Elder Signs and losing. If you gain five curse cards, you'll also lose. And, of course, you still win by getting your summoning track up to nine. And that is everything you need to know to raise a god and play Fate of the Elder Gods. I do hope you've enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you have, please do give me a like, a share, a subscribe, a comment. Any of that stuff would be great. And as always, thanks for watching and bye for now.